So most people in the developed nation know me as a super cool and handsome YouTube superstar Sean Daniel. But did you know that in the far reaches of the earth, I'm actually better known as the brother of world famous adventurer Paul's Daniel of Paul's Planet, the internet's most underrated nature show, and I've actually been commissioned to do the music on the newest episode of Paul's Planet, which is about llamas. So I'm going to take you through the creation of a pretty jamming world music, South American, Peruvian style vibe llama track. So let's get to it. So the inspiration today is llamas. The first thing I'm going to do is make a percussion track with uh, some different samples of some kind of hand percussion, uh, bongos, djembes, things of that nature. I think that's the way to get the world thing started. And uh, basically we're going to do this in 5-4 timing because I feel like the llama marches to its own time signature and uh, what could be more llama-like than 5-4. So I'm just going to start messing around with uh, some different samples, start lining them up where I think they should go, and then we're going to have a pretty pretty awesome llama track. I usually like dealing with 5-4 as a count of 3 and a count of 2. So we're going to put a low djembe on the 1, which is going to be right there. And we're going to put it on the 1 and the 4. 3, 4, 5, Alright, so here's what I got. It's not totally gridded. I kind of put it off time a little bit. It's like bum bum ba dum bum bum. Kind of jazzy. 5 4 tempo, a little ahead of the beat. So now I'm going to lay down some acoustic guitar in that. Kind of cool progression like. this in the key of A because the word llama has multiple A's in it. Uh, so that's been my inspiration for this uh, so far. What we've got is we've got a one, one, three, four. I'm doing it like in scale degrees. So one being A, three being C sharp, four being D. So we got a one chord, three, four, one, six, three, four, Second time, one, three, four, one, six, five, one. Because uh, I've uh, done some studies on the feeding patterns of, patterns of llamas, and as they kind of rotate through these fields of grass, they always kind of just circle around this. That's why I'm kind of building this heavy on the one chord, dancing around, hitting it, going to that relative minor, back through, and then later on in the day, in, uh, in the llama's day, we're gonna kinda end up eventually getting to the five and bringing it on home to one. So let's track it. Alright, next step is going to be adding some actual percussion. So my sister does a lot of traveling for work, and she brought me back these uh, goat hooves for or goat nails or something it's from some country. Not really sure where they're from. The thing is, these actually smell like an actual goat, which is kind of weird. I don't think they're vegan, but I'm going to add this to the percussion track anyways. Also, everyone knows that uh, goats are the natural predatory enemy of llamas. Okay, so the next phase is adding this charango, which I actually got on my trip to Peru from a local guy. It's made out of orange wood, which apparently is a real thing and also kind of obvious. 
But I'm just gonna jam on it and try to find the melody. It's actually kind of tuned like a uh, ukulele. G, C, E, A, E. So it's like ukulele but with an extra E string on top. soundtrack is kind of blending a bunch of different genres together so we're actually gonna supplement some of the djembe stuff with an actual kit and mostly just uh, brush stuff on the cymbals plus a little bit of kick to kind of fill up the low end. Let's try it out. Obviously gonna have to use the shaker and tambourine so So a lot of you guys ask about the kind of gear that I use to record, so we're gonna break down uh, real quick everything that went into it. So let's check it out. This guy right here is a Neumann KM 184. Uh, I have a mesh pair of those, and I use these on the acoustic guitars and on the drum kit. So really the drum kit only had the two overheads and an Audix D6 on the kick right there. Uh, really there wasn't like a snare or anything, it was just cymbals and a kick, so pretty simple. And I have that running into a Universal Audio 4710 Pre, so these two guys right here are them. And the cool thing about this is, even though it's kind of bright, it has an insert that you can actually kind of uh, plug like some other outboard gear into it on the way. And for that I have these Warm audio uh, tube EQs that I run for the acoustic guitars. I think they sound really awesome on the acoustic guitars especially. I actually bypassed it on the drum kit this time just because I wanted just a flat thing and didn't really want to go through the hassle of uh, kind of testing it and then running back and setting things, which is a pain when you do everything by yourself like I do. Uh, all the other microphone stuff went through the Universal Audio 6176. And I usually record things through that by way of the AT4050 Audio-Technica. So uh, really, the only thing I mic'd with that was the percussion. Uh, the Chirango and the acoustic guitar were both with the uh, Neumann condensers for sure. I tracked the good old Rickenbacker bass that was direct into the 6176 which is pretty much how I always do it. I used to kind of mic it up, but I don't really do that so much anymore. But uh, yeah, that's for the bass. The guitar sadly did not make it into this one. And then the electric guitar was an Audix i5 on the cab of the Mesa that I had cranking with the Ernie Ball Music Man Albert Lee HH, which is right here. <laughs> 